Okay, so we just finished with the SEO audit checklist. Again, I know that was quite long. A lot of these are gonna be quite long, but it's all to your benefit. This is why we're going over this stuff. So the second thing is keywords. List keywords suggested by site's current content. So all you're gonna do is get up a notepad, something like this. I'm gonna drag it over here. And like I said, mine is all about sales funnels. Um, so if you want to do research, I have made a number of courses on how to perform keyword research. The main thing that you're going to do is go inside of here and just go keyword uh, planner. And that's going to open up Google, which allows you to find all of the keywords that Google is suggesting relate to your website or to a similar keyword that you have. I'm not going to go inside of that because there is so much to cover in terms of keywords and you know, what's a buying keyword, what's a research keyword. So I want you to just, if you have any confusion on how to do keyword research, get one of my courses on keyword research and how to perform it. Any one of my keyword research, I, and I go over different parts, but they all cover the basics. And just get that, you'll learn how to identify the best keywords that relate for you and your website. Um, so I just list them out like this. And I already know some of mine. So, you know, even having adding an S, that's a unique, different keyword. Uh, my sales funnel, uh, build a sales funnel, um, sales funnel consultant, sales funnel consultants. So now I have all my lists. So I can say, yes, I have my keywords listed out and you want to get a list of about 20 to 30 keywords. You can have a huge mega list if you want, but the top 20 or 30 keywords you want to focus on, focus on, that's the main idea. And then from there, you can use, uh, I think it's keywordfinder.com. And this is free for a little bit, and then you have to pay, but it actually gives you the search volume, which is something that Keyword Planner does not do. So if you wanna find the search volume, instead of having you know between 100 and 1,000 people search this every month, you can actually go, yeah, but 720 people search this every month on average over 12 months. And that's what Keyword Finder does for you. So it's free to start. It does the same thing, you know, if I was to enter in sales funnel uh, consultant, it's going to suggest additional keywords that kind of go in, in lieu with that. And it's using just Google Keyword Planner as uh, its reference database. So it says here, 28 out of 100, it's an easy keyword to go after. Um, I look into sales funnel, that's a 51 out of 100, so it's a little harder. Um, but the CPC, this is a good way to identify it. If the CPC is high, people are paying for it, which means it converts, which means it has money, which means there's obviously a reason people are paying for it because there, there's there's people who buy and they, they have a lot of value inside of this. So sales pipeline, funnel, all of these different types of keywords are very uh, unique but relevant in terms of what I'm going after, which is a sales funnel, sales funnel consultant. So that's keywords research just kind of quickly for you guys. Now, access site analytics if available for additional keywords. We've already done that. Uh, check keyword search volume. Again, you use keyword planner. That's how you do that. Check rankings for your targeted keywords. The best way to do that is to actually use what I call uh, Longtail Pro. Um, and if you just go to zachmiller.com, zach-miller.com forward slash uh, LTP, you'll get a special code for I believe it's a one dollar trial for Longtail Pro this researches where your rankings are out of 500 so it goes 50 pages deep bigger and longer and deeper than any other ranking software that's out there basically and it gets this for you so here we go uh, Longtail Pro is what I use for keyword research finding the keyword competition finding out where I rank finding out the difficulty of everything finding the volume of keywords everything's in here I use LTP. So it's a $1 trial. And then after that, I think it's like 27 bucks a month. It's again, if you list something on Fiverr, all of these tools can pay for themselves. I have people that I just pay. I outsource the work and they do it and I still make money on Fiverr. So if that just kind of puts it in perspective of how easy it is to pay for these tools. So we're going to say we checked for them. A lot of these keywords, rankings and where they're at. If you do it the manual way, you basically have to type in sales funnel consultants, and then I'm gonna have to go through and find, hey, is Zach Miller anywhere on here? No, it's not. Okay, I have to go to the next page. Search that up. 
Zach Miller, anyone? No. Okay, so I have to keep going around and around and around until I finally found it. And that's a lot of work. So get LTP, cuts all that work out. So list competitors showing for those keywords. Any of the top 10 competitors, again, that's what LTP will get for you. Um, none of the site crawlers will do this or the SEO audit tools. Uh, the reason being for that is just that they want to crawl and edit your website, not your competitors. So there's a lot that goes into that. But LCP will actually list out the top 10 competitors for each keyword, their, their tags, their titles, their descriptions, how many links they have built, their domain age, their, you know, t uh, their, their domain authority, page authority, their trust flow, citation flow, and a million other metrics for each single domain, all 10 of them, they're ranking page one on that web on Google for your one individual keyword. It'll get all of them and it'll show them to you. So there's a lot of stuff that LTP does that adds to this keyword research. So our title tags descriptive, do they contain keywords? We're gonna say yes, of course, but ultimately when we do our research, we're gonna find out what's missing where, what needs more, you know, better descriptive terms, what needs more keywords, what needs more optimization when we do our SEO audit. Do they have duplicate title tags? Um, we want this to be a no. Oftentimes though, when you use something like Yoast SEO and WordPress and these different types of uh, SEO plugins, they will autofill your titles, your tags, your descriptions and everything for you. And oftentimes it's not unique. So you gotta make sure that you go through and do this manually. Are meta descriptions descriptive? They should be, they should be built for conversions first and then contain maybe one, at least one really, and then maybe two or three other keywords. Most of the times all I can get in is one keyword and that's all really a page should be focused on is one main keyword and then it's gonna naturally rank for a bunch of sub keywords outside of that main one. So I may be talking about sales funnel consultants and then one of my sub keywords is how can I find a good sales funnel consultant? You know, something like that. And now that's a sub keyword. So you gotta keep that in mind that it's not just, you know, every single keyword I can stuff in there. It's really, it's really a matter of one main keyword and then through the use of that main keyword and the variations of natural language and speaking, you're gonna find like, you're not just gonna use sales funnel consultants, you're gonna use sales funnel consultant the singular, you're gonna say, how can I find them? Sales funnel consultant reviews, sales funnel consultant case studies, um, you know, what to look for in a sales consultant, that's all that types of stuff. So there's a lot of things you can do. You want this to be a yes. Do you have duplicate content? Again, same thing, you want it to say no there because if you end up finding that there's duplicate content, Google basically gives one of your pages credit and it gives the other one a zero. And that is not what you want to happen. Um, are keywords used in URLs, headings, body text, bolding, etc.? Again, um, I'm gonna give you an optimization guide and a little bit of optimization ideas behind this so that way you know how to optimize one page. And you're gonna apply that, that optimization for over one page and we're gonna go over it for like 30 minutes. But that one optimization, you can then take what you learned in there and apply it to everything because that's how you how you optimize one page, it's how you optimize everything, all right? So are keywords used in internal links? Yes, we want that to be so. Are they used in image alt text? Yes, we want that to be so. So that's kind of our keywords. I told you the basics of how you're gonna get researching them, how you're gonna find the competition, how you're gonna get your competitor's information, and then I'm gonna go inside of, after all of this, um, really how to optimize a specific single article, and I'm gonna give you my optimization guide so that way you can follow it and do likewise. Again, it's just monkey see, monkey do. That's what I want this to really be. You don't have to think too much. Um, you just have to understand the basics, and from the basics, you apply that knowledge to anything that you come across, and it should fix it. That's simple.